Gangrene is a serious and potentially life-threatening condition that occurs when a part of the body's tissue dies due to a lack of blood supply or an infection. While gangrene can affect any part of the body, it most commonly affects the extremities, such as toes, fingers, and limbs, and can also occur in internal organs like the intestines. The word gangrene comes from the Greek gangrena, meaning eating sore. This basically gives us a vivid image of what gangrene does. It essentially eats away at living tissue. When tissue is deprived of oxygen and nutrients from blood flow, it begins to die. As the tissue death progresses, the affected area can become discolored, often turning black, and may develop a foul odor due to the decay of tissue. Gangrene is not particularly common in developed countries with access to modern healthcare, but it remains a serious problem in certain populations. For example, individuals with underlying conditions such as diabetes, peripheral artery disease, or weakened immune systems are at much higher risk of developing gangrene. Types of gangrene. There are different types of gangrene, each with distinct characteristics. Here are the most common types. Number one. Dry gangrene. This type usually develops gradually and is often associated with chronic medical conditions that affect blood circulation like diabetes or arteriosclerosis. In this type of gangrene, the tissue becomes dry, shriveled, and black. Number two, wet gangrene. This develops when tissue becomes infected in addition to losing blood supply. It progresses more rapidly than dry gangrene, and the affected tissue becomes moist, swollen, and emits a foul odor. Number three, gas gangrene. This is a rare but severe form caused by a specific type of bacteria called Clostridium. This bacterium produces gas within the tissue, leading to a rapid spread of infection and severe pain. Gas gangrene can develop in deep wounds, and the release of gas bubbles into the surrounding tissue can lead to tissue death at an alarming rate. Causes of gangrene. Gangrene can happen for a variety of reasons, but the underlying problem is always the same. The tissue dies because it is not receiving enough blood. Blood provides vital oxygen and nutrients to tissues and also removes waste products. Without that steady supply, the tissue begins to deteriorate, for instance, dry gangrene is most often caused by conditions that impede circulation, such as peripheral artery disease or diabetes. People with these conditions suffer from restricted blood flow to their extremities, particularly their legs and feet. Over time, poor circulation can lead to tissue death if the area is injured or damaged, even in minor ways, such as through a cut, blister, or sore. Since the tissue is no longer receiving nutrients and oxygen, it eventually dries out, turns black, and dies. This type of gangrene is usually less urgent than wet or gas gangrene because there is no active infection, but it still requires medical treatment to prevent complications. Wet gangrene, on the other hand, is typically caused by bacterial infections, especially following injuries such as crush wounds, deep burns, or severe frostbite. In wet gangrene, the body's immune response kicks in to fight the infection, but the damaged tissue cannot heal properly because of the infection. As bacteria multiply and attack the tissue, it becomes swollen, moist, and discolored. Finally, gas gangrene is often linked to trauma or surgery, particularly when deep wounds become contaminated with dirt, bacteria, or foreign material. The Clostridium bacteria thrive in low oxygen environments and release toxins that destroy tissue, producing gas that accumulates in the affected area. The rapid spread of infection is a hallmark of gas gangrene, and without immediate medical treatment, it can lead to death within hours or days. Symptoms of gangrene. The symptoms of gangrene can vary depending on the type and location, but there are some common signs to watch for. In dry gangrene, the affected area typically becomes cold and numb. The skin may change color, progressing from reddish-blue to brown and eventually black as the tissue dies. There's often a clear line between healthy and gangrenous tissue. Wet gangrene presents differently. The affected area may be swollen and painful. The skin might be pale at first, but then turn red or bronze before eventually turning black. Blisters filled with fluid may develop. As the condition progresses, the skin may become cool and numb, and as the tissue breaks down more, it becomes discolored, turning shades of green, black, or purple.
Wet gangrene is often accompanied by a foul odor due to the bacterial infection. Patients with wet gangrene may also experience fever, chills, and fatigue as their body fights the infection. In severe cases, the infection can spread to the bloodstream, causing sepsis, which is a medical emergency. Finally, gas gangrene has some distinct symptoms. The affected area often becomes extremely painful and swollen. The skin may be pale at first, but quickly becomes red or bronze. A characteristic crackling or popping sensation can be felt when pressing on the skin due to gas bubbles in the tissue. Diagnosis of gangrene. Diagnosing gangrene typically involves a combination of physical examination and various tests. A doctor will start by looking at the affected area and checking for typical signs like changes in skin color, swelling, and any discharge or odor. They'll also check for a pulse in the area and assess the temperature and sensation of the skin. Blood tests are often ordered to check for signs of infection, such as an elevated white blood cell count. They can also reveal other important information, like blood sugar levels in diabetic patients. Imaging tests play a crucial role in diagnosing gangrene and determining its extent. X-rays can show gas in tissues, which is characteristic of gas gangrene. CT scans or MRIs provide more detailed images and can help identify areas of dead tissue or blocked blood vessels. In some cases, an arteriogram might be used. This involves injecting a dye into the bloodstream and taking x-rays to visualize blood flow. For suspected cases of internal gangrene, additional tests like ultrasound or specialized CT scans may be necessary to visualize the affected organs. In some cases, especially with wet gangrene, a sample of tissue or fluid may be taken for laboratory analysis. This can help identify the specific bacteria causing the infection, which is crucial for choosing the most effective antibiotic treatment. Treatment for gangrene. For all types of gangrene, the first step is usually to remove the dead tissue, which is a process called debridement. This can range from relatively minor procedures for small areas of dry gangrene to extensive surgeries for more severe cases. In some instances, amputation may be necessary to prevent the spread of gangrene and save the patient's life. Antibiotics are a crucial part of treatment, especially for wet gangrene and gas gangrene. These are typically given intravenously and may include a combination of different antibiotics to combat various types of bacteria. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is sometimes used, particularly for gas gangrene. This involves breathing pure oxygen in a pressurized room or tube. The high levels of oxygen can help kill bacteria and promote healing. In some cases of dry gangrene, particularly in patients with poor circulation due to peripheral artery disease or diabetes, doctors may recommend procedures to improve blood flow, such as angioplasty or bypass surgery. These procedures can help restore circulation to the affected area, reducing the risk of further tissue death. Wound care is another critical aspect of treatment. This involves keeping the area clean and protected, changing dressings regularly, and monitoring for signs of infection or further tissue death. The prognosis for gangrene varies widely depending on how quickly it's diagnosed and treated, the extent of tissue damage, and the patient's overall health. When caught early and treated promptly, many people recover well, especially from limited areas of dry gangrene. However, more extensive gangrene, particularly wet or gas gangrene, can be life-threatening even with prompt treatment. Prevention of gangrene. Prevention is a key focus in managing the risk of gangrene, especially for those with known risk factors. For people with diabetes, this includes regular foot checks, good blood sugar control, and prompt treatment of any foot injuries or infections. Quitting smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, and getting regular exercise can all help improve circulation and reduce the risk of gangrene. Proper wound care is also essential in preventing gangrene from developing in injured areas. This includes cleaning wounds thoroughly, keeping them covered, and seeking medical attention for deep or infected wounds. Now, we want to hear from you. Have you or someone you know ever experienced gangrene or a serious infection? How did you handle the symptoms, and what was your recovery journey like? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.